So when you think of insurance, what do you think of? For me, there's a couple of things. I'm sure some of you have dealt with a situation where you've got car insurance and you look at your bank account and you say, oh, that's weird. I thought my payment was this, but it went up by 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. This happened to me the other day. It is the most outrageous industry in the world. My policy went to renew and they upped it by 80 bucks. No phone call, no nothing. They have the discretion to do that. So when I called them, they said, oh, well, just times are tough. I mean, we have to increase prices. Okay, goodbye. Jake from State Farm at three in the morning. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Yeah, I don't think I have money for khakis after you raise my policy by 80 bucks a month, but okay. What about the even darker side of insurance? What about gun insurance? Now, I imagine most of you have heard about gun insurance, whether it's through my channel or several others. And the ones that we have right now is firearm insurance for you, to where if you shoot someone in self-defense, they cover you. But we've learned time and time again that these insurance-based self-defense insurances will find any way to not cover a member. And you know, I've been racking my mind about it, but ultimately it's on us, right? It's on everybody who joined a company like that because ultimately if you boil down insurance to their business model, it's get as many policies as possible and find any way not to cover a claim. That's how they are profitable. They are not profitable by getting a bunch of people to join and then covering every claim possible and being moral about it. I mean, they're one slight step down from tax people. But then my brain started to think about these business models of these big insurance-based self-defense coverages. And I said, well, there has to be a reason why they're doing it based off of insurance rather than just taking everybody's premiums and hiring lawyers for the cases that they do have. And then it hit me. There is a bill out right now that would require people to have mandatory gun insurance. Now, just off the top of your head, who would benefit the most from a law being put in like this. Watch this. Insurance for gun owners being considered at the state capitol. The Democratic bill cleared its first hurdle tonight, passing out of a House committee. W7's Colette Bordelon live outside the capitol. And Guys, it was a six to five vote out of committee for House Bill 1270. If it became law, it would require gun owners to insure their firearms. So I'm kind of putting two and two together as far as if I owned one of these insurance companies, these self-defense insurances, what my long view would be, right? It's a common practice in business saying, okay, well, what are we gonna be doing in 10 years? These self-defense insurance companies will benefit from this because if a mandatory liability gun insurance gets passed, you know how easy it's gonna be, for example, a USCCA to say, hey, we already have an insurance company attached. Come over here. We'll be your mandatory liability insurance plus your self-defense coverage, even though we may drop you. No guarantees. After all, we have the insurance-based business model to where we want your money and then we don't wanna pay out on claims. That's how we live. That's how we make a living. Sponsors of the bill say it will help protect people when accidental shootings happen. Claims could be filed for medical expenses or monetary damages. Policyholders would be protected from the claims if their gun was stolen and they report it. Those in support of the bill compared it to car insurance and say it'll increase responsible gun ownership here in Colorado. But those against it say it's one more financial challenge to owning a gun. So I have a very strong disclaimer to people. Put my issues with a USCCA or any other insurance-based self-defense coverage to the side at the moment. One reason not to be a part of these companies is insurance is heavily regulated by the government which means the government most likely has everybody's info that is a part of one of these insurance-based companies because they're most likely required to hand it out. That could also go for an ATF or any other agency who wants your info because once again, insurance is government regulated. Are you okay with that? I'm not. So here is my recommendation to people. I would recommend dropping your insurance-based coverage for several reasons. One, they have been known to drop members. Two, they have the insurance-based business model, which is collect as many premiums as possible and not cover as many claims as they can. Three, they're gonna be a front runner for the government to be a yes sir and say, yes, we will be 
a provider for your mandatory gun insurance because we benefit from it in terms of money. I recommend everybody drop that stuff and join Attorneys on Retainer. Here are some facts about Attorneys on Retainer. They cover every single state. If you live in California, I know there's a ton of questions about this. Your rights are not different than ours, for example, in Texas, in Nevada, even in New York, Florida, wherever. That's how Attorneys on Retainer sees it. So your coverage is no different than ours in Texas or Florida or wherever. Just because your gun laws are different doesn't mean your self-defense coverage has to be different. And that goes for all the states that these insurance carriers don't cover. Attorneys on Retainer is a law firm. They want to to help you, as long as you have a reasonable claim to self-defense. And that means not going and off in your neighbor and then calling them and saying, hey, my neighbor has a kitchen knife and I saw him grab it, so I shot him. It's not gonna work. But they offer all the same stuff that these major insurance carriers do. That's the beauty of it. They have bail coverage, they cover you all the way through trial, and no, they don't have a recoupment clause like these other insurance carriers do that is required by law because they can't cover a criminal act. So we're giving you $50 off when you sign up below. I wanna give a big shout out to Will from Copper Jacket TV. He just joined the Attorneys on Retainer team, put out a great video a couple days ago about it. So link and code below the video, go join. Drop the insurance crap. And so there are protections for folks that can't afford it, but are responsible gun owners and that they, they, they have proven that um, and so we've created avenues to make sure that, again, we are not impeding on anyone's constitutional rights. No offense, but you are a stupid asshole. Again, we are not impeding on anyone's constitutional rights. Whammy! <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, this gun insurance stuff has one simple goal. It's for our government to infringe on our rights more than they already have. And let me tell you who this is gonna affect. This is going to affect low-income people. This is even going to affect the middle class. More money coming out of your pocket to be a part of your God-given right. You know what mandatory gun insurance would be like? It would be like a toll booth to the Second Amendment. Oh, you wanna get on this highway? Pay a toll. Oh, you wanna use your Second Amendment? Pay a toll, please. Every month, recurring. And if you don't pay, we'll charge you a fine or we'll come to your house and confiscate your weapons. That's the other thing that could come from this gun insurance crap. Oh, you don't have gun insurance? Oh, well, we can make laws off of it. If you're not insured at all times, we can arrest you. If you lapse on your policy, we can arrest you. If you lapse on your policy, we can come and take your guns because they're not insured. Imposing things like mandatory gun insurance, it doesn't address the violence problem in America. The only way that will be addressed is one by arming more Americans, intimidating the people who were causing the violence by encouraging the citizens to stand up for other people and changing the culture. Simple as that.